Now in this video, we'll talk about inter-thread communication. Now let's imagine we have two threads and so they want to communicate. So based on first thread process, the second thread will execute. Let's say if, if the first thread is doing something, after that second thread too should do something and then after second thread has done its work, it, it time for the first thread work once again. So that means these two threads are communicating so that they can work properly. Now, how can you how can you achieve uh, two threads interacting? For that, let me just write an example here, and that and then we'll we'll try to understand how that will be done. So let's start with an example here. So what I will do now is I will create a class here. Let me create, let me name this class as A. Okay, uh, we can have any class name for that matter. It doesn't matter here. So we have that class A here, and in this class, oh, I already have a class A. Let's go for class Q. So we have a class Q here. In, in this, let's have a number which is num. Okay, so we have a int variable which is num. And we need two variables here. One who will set the value. And I mean two methods. One who will set the value, one who will get the value. For that, I will create a method which will set the value. So I will say, let's say, name, let's name it as put. Again, we can use any name. Let me use put. And let's say this is num itself. Okay. And now how will I assign the value? I will say num. I will say this dot num equal to num. Right? That's how you assign the value. And we also need to fetch the value. We'll say public int get and it will return num. Okay, it's that simple. We just, we just need two methods here. One who will return the value, one who will set the value. Now once we have done with this, Let's go for two, two more classes. Now, since we are talking about threads, let's also create some threads here. So I will create a first thread. We'll name this thread as producer. Because normally this prop, this inter-thread communication, to understand this, one of the best example we, we all use is producer consumer. So let's take this. We have a producer here. And will this producer will implement runnable. OK, that's how we create a thread, right? And inside this producer, unfortunately, I guess I already have a, oh no, there's no issue with that. Let me create a constructor here for this. I will say this constructor as, okay, maybe, yeah. So let's make a constructor. So I will say new, right like, oh, before that, I also need an object of Q. We'll say Q, Q itself. And let's use a constructor, I will right like, and we'll go for, a uh, source constructor with fields and we'll, we'll say okay we got a constructor there okay I don't need to call super method here okay and I also need a, a run method right so I will say public void run and now what it will have is it will it will have a number it will have a count of which is zero and I need a infinite loop so when you want infinite loop you always write while true because it will go for infinite loop and every time this loop runs I want to set the value I want to put the value of num as num plus plus or not num plus plus but i plus plus so every time it runs it will change the value of n okay it will change the value of num okay and after that I need I need to see the value right so I will also use a wait I will, I will I will also make it hold for some time so I will use a try catch in which I will say thread dot sleep and I have to ask him for wait for thousand milliseconds that's enough for I guess and then I will say catch I will say exception e right now once we got that we, we have done with producer the same thing can be done with consumer so this is our producer which is producing the value. So every time it runs, it, it produces a new value. Now what I will do is I will go for consumer. So I will copy this code and I will create a new thing. In fact, I should I, feel I should type it. So I will say class con con consumer implements runnable. And here also let me create object of Q. And so I'm creating the reference of Q, okay, the object is created object is getting passed from somewhere so I also need a constructor here we'll say constructor 
hey, there's something missing here. If we can see producer, we need to call run, right? How do we call run? So to call run, first of all, we have to call, we have to create object of thread. And so let's create object of thread. We'll say thread, or this one. We'll say thread t1 or t equal to new thread. And we'll say this is, uh, we can also have a thread name, but before that we have to say this, we have to pass the same object. And we'll pass this is producer. So we are specifying the object and we are specifying the name for it and we'll say this dot dot start. That's uh, not 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 here, but we'll say t dot start. That's how you, that's how you start the thread, right? The same thing we need in consumer. We also need a thread for that. Since we want to achieve two threads, one will be producer thread and one will be consumer thread, we'll say source constructor with Q and here also we need a thread so we'll use the same line of code which is done here let's reuse the code right so let's let's do that here and this should be consumer okay and it gives you an error okay yeah, because we are missing something. We are missing a main method, I mean the run method. And inside this one, what I want to do is, now producer is, producer is producing the values, right? So what consu consumer should do is, consumer should consume the value. And how to do that? We'll say, we'll again run, we'll run a while loop, which is true. And every time you run your, I mean every time it loops, we'll simply say get, okay? And we'll also need to, okay, in fact, what I should do is, it should give me the value, but there should be a, there should be a, a time limit. Let me just copy this code and paste it here. In fact, what I feel is, instead of get returns a value, I will say get you also, where is get? So get will also say void and instead of saying return, what we'll do is we'll print the value of num here. So we'll print the value of num just to make it simple. Okay, and so we have done with get. Okay, everything seems good. And every time you set the value, let's also print the value of num which you are sending. So we'll say put plus and here we'll say get plus. So we are putting the value and we are getting the value. Okay, that seems good, right? And now I also applied the time. Let's run this code. Uh, before running this, there should be something. Because we, we got two threads, right? We got producer, we got consumer, both are accepting the object of Q. And one is assigning the value and one is printing the value. Now, if I, if I create, if I, first of all, we have to create the object of Q. We have to do that. Let's do that. We got the object of Q. And we need two objects, one is producer, one is consumer. I will simply create an anonymous object so that our work will be there. So we'll say new producer Q, new consumer Q. Okay, and I guess that's it. Let's run this code. Let's see what happens. As you can see, it is saying zero, zero, that perfect. Then it says zero. Oh, hold on, that is some, there's something wrong here. Uh, what I was expecting is, when you put zero, it should get zero, that makes sense. But we got get two times, that is weird. And, okay, that is, that is really weird. And now if you look at this, we got put, we got one, we got put, we got two, put three, get three. Everything seems good, but here we got put five and six, it is getting five. That is weird, right? So what I want is once you, Set the value, you should get the value. So set value, get value. Set value, get value. So by the time you're not getting the value, this should not run. Okay, example, we are getting put two times here. It should not be done, right? So we should get the second put only when you got the get. So first a producer will produce, then the consumer will consume so that the producer will consume the next value, or produce the next value. So when producer is running for the for the for, for the for one time, can you so consumer will also run for the one for one only once. Now how to achieve that? So what we'll do for that is we'll do, we'll use a boolean variable here just to keep the track and we'll name this boolean variable as value set 
and by default we'll keep it false okay and let's start with put if if the value so in this while condition so we'll apply a while condition here we'll say while your value while your value is set that means if it, if it returns a true that means if your value is true that means you have you have already set the value so see when you say value is set that means you have already set the value right then you should not set it now so when you have already set it the value you should always wait so we can we can ask our thread to wait so for that we just have to use wait okay and it may throw an exception we'll use a try block here and with that we also need a exception e okay so what we are doing is if you have set the value that means you should not i mean once once you put the value you should not put it once again so if you put the value it will be false it will wait for some time it will wait for the consumer to consume the value okay once you are waiting for it your consumer so once it once you say wait it will go into wait state so once it goes into wait state there is then it there need to be someone who will notify it so there's a difference between thread.sleep and wait thread.sleep is something where you are asking it to sleep for some time right so when you say one second two seconds after one or two seconds it will come back automatically but when you say wait you're not specifying the time right so we need some other thread who will notify hey wait i mean hey thread one i'm done with my, my work come back we can do that with the help of notify now who will notify the other thread will notify so if producer is waiting consumer will notify if consumer is waiting producer will notify okay so we'll see how to how to notify later but let's say if this is not true if your value set is false then here once you have set the value we'll set the value of see here we are setting the value right so after setting the value we'll say value set equal to true okay because if it is false we'll set it true and then once it is done let's go for let's go for get now before fetching the value in get also we'll see we'll do the same thing here we are checking for true condition here we'll check we'll, in the get we'll check for the false condition if it is if it is not set then if it is not set then wait so we'll wait otherwise we'll print the message and we'll set the value as false so basically we are achieving we are two we have two threads who is who is talking now but hold on are they talking not exactly because this one producer when producer goes on wait it is consumers responsibility to notify it so here we'll say notify so whom it is notifying it is notifying the producer thread and after this we have to notify which will notify the consumer thread so this notify notifies the producer thread and this notify notifies the consumer thread okay and if you try to run this code we got an exception okay that is weird now why we got this exception maybe because whenever you use wait we need to make sure that our method is synchronized that is one thing because i don't want any conflict so we have to make sure that our method is synchronized we'll do it for this one also let's see if, if it solves the problem and you can see the problem is solved that means whenever you use a wait method which is compulsory for us to use synchronized and you can see when producer is producing consumer is consuming when producer is producing consumer is consuming there is no conflict even if you mismatch the time example producer is producing after every second but let's say consumer is consuming it after two seconds in this scenario even if your producer has done its work it will wait for the consumer you can see it will wait it is waiting for the consumer then it, it is executing let me do that let me just reduce the time a bit let me say this is 500 and this is 5 seconds so this is 500 milliseconds this is 5000 seconds so producer is very fast but consumer is very slow so it, as you can see uh, that is weird now 
और इस हाफ ने गिया दिस शोइंग द ओल्ड आउटपुट आई गेस या दिस शोइंग द ओल्ड आउटपुट लेट मी रन दिस वंस अगेन सो यू कैन सी वी गॉट जीरो जीरो Producers produce, but consumer is waiting, right? So it is waiting. So producers produce; it is waiting for the consumer. Once consumed, producer is producing, waiting for the consumer. Once consumed, it is producing the next one. So that means these two are interacting. So we can use wait to to make a thread wait, and this notify. I mean, the notify. So one thread will wait; the other thread will notify. That's how it works. Okay. There is one thing you have to observe. When you say wait, we are not using any any class to call that method, right? Because when you use sleep method, we use thread class. What about this wait? If you click, if you talk about the sleep method which we have used here, it belongs to thread class. Can you see that it belongs to thread class? But when it comes to wait method, when it comes to wait method, uh, let me stop the execution first. Okay. So when you talk about the wait method, it belongs to object class because wait and notify they want an object to work with. So they work with any object. Okay. Now this is very one of the one of the famous interview question. Where does this wait method belongs to? It belongs to object because wait on the thread is done with the help of object. So thread is waiting for that particular object. So wait notify they are. threads uh, they are objects methods what about sleep they, that that is a that is a thread method so that's how you achieve inter thread communication point to remember is you can achieve inter thread communication with the help of wait and notify so where one thread is asking the other thread to wait i mean one thread will wait the other thread will notify that is inter thread communication we have so with this example we have also talked about producer and consumer problem so that's it from this video